sorry, it's packed in, packed in here. A uh, bit of classical civilization, um, just to, to talk you through what uh, this would involve uh, if, you, if you sign up for classical civilization next year. Uh, for any that don't know me, my, I'm Miss McClure, I'm head of classics in, in the scene school. Uh, so I hope uh, this, this answers any questions. If it does actually just raise some questions that you, you wish to ask, then obviously do, do catch me probably at the end. Uh, or indeed, uh, if, if you're a pupil, uh, there's Mr. Skerritt, Mr. Hind, Mr. Sim uh, Ms. Simmons, uh, faces, friendly faces, you probably know down in prep school as well, so feel free to ask them uh, anything that comes out of, uh, out of this short presentation. It's just gone 25 past, so I'd better get going. Uh, the timings are crucial. Okay. Classical civilization. In terms of the lower fourth, to be honest, I know there is some curricular change around, uh, and that's uh, heralded some of the, uh, the thought process behind making the options now. In terms of classical civilization, I would still very much want to start in the lower fourth with a survey, just to give you a real taste of what this uh, fantastic subject of mine, uh, can, can, the scope of it uh, and the breadth of it. So there would be a, a survey of ancient Greece and Rome, lots of topics. You'd probably be looking at a couple of topics a week or something like that, just to, to really dip your toe in, into the classical world. Can I just clarify at the moment, I will not be trying to force Latin or ancient Greek on you. This is all study uh, in English, so any of the sources. Uh, I probably can't help myself, there might be the odd word of Latin that just comes <laughs> in. But uh, in terms of, of general con conversing, uh, it's, we're talking English. Um, and it's likely to include those sort of things. I'm not going to be too prescriptive because I just find that quite difficult with my subject, especially when you're having that initial, that initial survey. So things like the myths, we'll see those will crop up uh, in the new GCSE specs as well. Uh, heroes, surely that's what uh, gets anyone interested in, in classics. It's usually to do with the, the myths and the heroes and the gods uh, and all of the stories that go with them. Elements of the Olympic Games, of course, relating to festivals, the religious aspect of that, not just the uh, the, the uh, sporting aspect, and then you know quite a lot of time probably spent just looking at some of the set pieces of uh, the classical timeline. Uh, so you look at some of daily life, uh, some comparisons between Athens and Sparta, uh, and then obviously as we went through the timeline in the survey, you'd be looking at some of the Rome as well. Particularly the expansion of Rome. You know, this is something that we can follow, and the source material will allow you to see how this comparatively rustic town ended up being a. Uh, the centre of a, an empire that, uh, that uh, covered the, the Mediterranean basin. So some of the politics, some of the expansion, obviously aspects that uh, people are uh, uh, still conscious of, like the professionalism of the army and the ruthlessness of the army. Uh, a range of the emperors, the good, the bad, and the ugly within there. Uh, and uh, also sort of cultural topics such as, such as slavery. So ending uh, from your sort of judiciary throw this goblos here to Julius Caesar, uh, looking at you there in the corner. Uh, we, we sort of have a survey of what the subject uh, covers. Now, of course, you are making a choice now that will uh, that will affect GCSE uh, choices as well, so I'm afraid I do have to give you a bit of OCR specification, jargon, blurb, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is not the most interesting slide of the presentation, but here is what OCR believe a GCSE classical civilization uh, is all about. So I'll give you a moment just to relish the <laughs> of, uh, of that slide. Um, heartening that they do want you to have some knowledge of the classical world, that's, that's a good starting point I always think. Uh, essentially you then use that knowledge to come up with some, uh, some opinions and some insight into what you're studying and therefore have uh, an opinion that you can put on paper uh, using some of the evidence and you know, lots of uh, uh, legacy and tangents that, that come from the classical world uh, that we can talk about uh, the, the modern world as well, the relevance of them. Okay, I should move on from that. I do of course also need to talk a, a little bit uh, briefly about exams. Essentially, the new this is the new specification, so it's, it's the upper fourth in next September that are starting this new uh, GCSE specification, uh, and they've streamlined it into two topics. Two topics, two exams, you can see we've got 50% uh, that's the headline app there. Uh, the thematic study is one that involves myth and religion, and they really have tried to open the course up, which I think is a, a great strength of the new specification. It's also led to a few headaches within the department, as you'll see in the next slide. But the first one, myth and religion, I think is an absolute uh, genuine starting point. As I said, most people's first contact with the ancient world is through that great mythology uh, bank of stories. Um, 
Here is just a, a, a general breakdown. We don't need to go into specific details, folks, but you can see they're trying very hard to make sure you get a, an idea of both Greece and Rome and then a contrast or a comparison between the two. Uh, so there's that informed response we're talking about. I put in about the, the 8 mark or the 15 mark questions. Those are the extended answer ones that we would start to be uh, practicing uh, as you get closer to the, the exam. So you can see, you can do the maths, I have 30 marks on that section. You can see 22 are pretty much on do you know your stuff, factual content, and can you sort of make it relevant to whatever source uh, is given to you. And then the 8 mark question will ask you something opinion based. Uh, on that source, you know, what does this tell you about a certain aspect of Greece? Likewise, the 15 mark, when it's comparing Greece and Rome, it could be something like, from your study of Roman fest uh, festivals, do you think you would prefer, as, a, as a, a, a member of the public, would you prefer a Greek or a Roman festival? Something like that, that you can bring in your knowledge of the two to come up with an informed response. Okay. Now, for the second one, you can see there is an or there. I'm not quite saying it's department wars, but uh, they're both just too interesting. We're not quite sure which one to go for yet. So this is, again, where by not being a guinea pig here, you'll, you'll, you'll have a chance for us to sort of compare them and, and give a bit more time to each. But they're both great topics. Um, Roman city life or war and warfare. We'll get on to the detail of what they involve in a moment. But you can see, again, uh, it's, it's a, a, a two-section idea. Um, you've got some extended answers as well. Uh, but it, it is looking at a, a, a body of factual knowledge which is then supplemented and complemented by some of the historical uh, literature uh, that, that is related to that topic. Okay, the myth of the religion. Um, looking down there, I mean, what's not to like? Really? Gods of Greece and Rome. Um, but of course, by, by making it Greece and Rome, you, it does mean that they, they've got this, this thematic idea in, that you can take someone like the, uh, the Heracles from Greek mythology and compare him with what the Romans thought of their Hercules and some of the subtle differences there. Whether he looked like the rock, I don't know, but uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of coming up with those opinions based on the two different, uh, slightly different slants. Likewise, temples in Greece and Rome, you know, not only for their architectural um, beauty, but also what they were there for. You can see how in terms of legacy you can compare with the religious building now and the different usages. Uh, all with civic buildings like Birmingham Town Hall is essentially a Greek temple in, uh, in design. Yeah, all of that side of things, plus the rituals that would go in uh, inside them. Likewise, the importance of, of religion to these two cities, you know, the actual fabric, the framework of these cities, the foundation of them, is all to do with these mythological uh, gods and goddesses and the stories of how they, you know, with Athens, obviously Athena would be involved with Rome, you've got Romulus and Remus and the wolf and all of that. So, you know, looking at the stories and the mythology and how those impact on the actual daily and everyday lives of, uh, uh, of, of the Greeks and the Romans. Likewise, their festivals, not only for the religious significance, also for the social significance. Let's not forget, you know, these are cultures that don't have the concept of a weekend, so that's why they enjoy festivals so much. They don't have to work that day, and therefore it's not just uh, all about the gods. And then also just rituals of life, the cycle of life, uh, their concept of the underworld and whatever. So there's plenty on there that you've probably got some idea of, but it's just a, a chance to, uh, to get a bit deeper into some of those, uh, some of those uh, topics. And again, what great sources. You know, you're looking at ancient Olympia, the Parthenon uh, in Athens, the Pantheon in Rome. Uh, there's, there's some great authors there. You know, that's uh, uh, a top list of, <coughs> of uh, classical authors. Okay, in terms of the decision time, again, pros and cons of each of these. Roman city life. You know, you've been looking at things like Pompeii, Herculaneum and Rome as, as, uh, as actual source material for the topics that can go on. So you know, lots of Pompeii in terms of the housing uh, and the home life, everyday life within a, uh, a bustling, burgeoning uh, Roman town. Structure of Roman society, uh, you know, the different uh, levels of society from the senators down to the plebeians. Um, and then lots on the leisure and entertainment. Obviously, different aspects of that, the, 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 the buildings or the, or the uh, places where these things happened, the conventions of how they took place, the rituals involved, and then also the actual entertainment level as well. You know, different types of gladiators, different types of uh, chariots, 
uh, equally theatre and comedy, and even something like the Vars, you know, huge <coughs> uh, pastime within, within uh, Roman life. So lots of it, the, 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 uh, the department debate, I suppose, is that there is a really good topic with lots of variety of, uh, uh, of issues to study, but it's just Rome, whereas the other one is a bit more detailed, but it's Rome and Greece. Uh, so that's, that's where, where we're thinking. But whichever one we plan for, folks, I hope you wouldn't be uh, disappointed. I also like, again, just the, the new spec and how they're looking at it. Uh, and if you know your ancient authors, what they've gone for here are some, are some it, they're satirical authors as well. So it's not a sort of dry, dusty look at these factual aspects of Rome. It's actually looking at real Romans, what they thought about them. Sometimes, you know, what they thought badly about some of these things and using that to, uh, from a distance in a historical way, look at that source material and come up with our own opinions. Equally, war and warfare will appeal to some as well, I'm sure. You can see the strength of this one is Greece and Rome. Um, but I suppose a more focused study in that you would look at Sparta, military training essentially, you know, if you were a boy there wasn't much uh, uh, careers advice, you would be a soldier. Uh, so that, that education system uh, and how that fitted in. Um, Battle of Thermopylae, I suppose, uh, the, the famous moment, 300 and all that, uh, just as where these, uh, these men suddenly came to their own and, and showed the, uh, the, the ancient world, you know, what they were all about. Athens, a bit more of a focus on uh, you know, the trireme up there and, and much more of a naval power, usually because they didn't want to fight the Spartans on land, they'd stuck to the sea. Uh, but the Battle of Salamis, again, um, just a, a, a specific uh, uh, event that you can see all of this background material in action. And likewise, everyone's perception of the Roman army, so it is, it's the professional army in the imperial period. Uh, and again, two, two big set pieces there, the Battle of Actium, where Augustus, that's what Octavian as he was then, finally became the last man standing so that he could be the first emperor, uh, and Trajan's uh, campaign in Dacia, uh, which inspired Trajan's column of enemy who to Rome, uh, just as a sort of pictorial spiral showing uh, how he defeated the Dacians. Okay, so that perhaps more of a visual uh, topic, and again, in terms of authors, you're going to come, come across some great authors, whichever of those we, uh, we pick. Which brings us to that, ladies and gentlemen, which is really why you're here today. Why study it? Um, you can see I talk a lot, but I would quite happily challenge any of my colleagues uh, to, to say their subject is broader. I would be fairly confident I can get most things back to classics uh, and the legacy of where, where things come from. So I think the sheer breadth of the subject, so at a moment where you're thinking about three years of study, not wanting to shut doors, wanting to keep a, a, a range of options open, uh, I, I think I've got a, a, a pretty good subject for you there. Um, it's topic based. You know, hopefully, there is something for everyone in what I've said today. Uh, you know, there might be some elements of, let's say, life in, uh, in Rome, daily life in Rome, that might not float your boat, but hopefully that's, there's a flip side of that in that there's another element that does. So, like any course, there'll be some bits that you, you prefer to others. Uh, I hope being topic based, you, know, you can compartmentalise. And when you do get in three years' time to the, the sort of business end of the exam season, you know where you are in terms of the bits that you've got to revise. That mix just, just balance, uh, backs up the breadth, really. I think, you know, the, the new specifications are a very good one for making sure you do genuinely get a good spread of the classical world, uh, rather than previous specifications where you have, you know, depending on centres, you have been able to focus on Rome or Greece or literature or culture. You know, this one does guarantee that you get that. Uh, you do get that breath. And here is something that, again, it, it, it is different, folks. Not every place is able, not every centre is able to offer this subject. It's not a subject that people are going to think is a light touch. You know, you're, if anything, you're getting that breadth which, which others uh, maybe do focus a little bit more on. So if you're looking for something that is different on an academic profile, you know, here is something that is not going to do you any disservice, but actually will, will enable you to say you've got a range of skills in a range of topics. Uh, across two cultures. And that's really where that comes in, folks. You know, some of the things I've talked about, that, that's a pretty long list. So if you are considering, do I do this one or that one, I would imagine they're probably all in there anyway. <laughs> so if you're looking for something that ticks that box, you know, obviously you're looking at something uh, from a distance of time. So there's a historical element into it. We talked about the rise of Rome and the political um, uh, escapades uh, as, as, as the emperors, there's the politics. 
for sociology, we talked about how religion impacts on daily life and even the way they live their lives and the fabric of their, of their town. There's the religion, the art of Pompeian houses, all those wonderful frescoes. The technology, just things like how the bars actually were able to function, uh, was in one of those topics. The business of Pompeii and Rome as Rome, one of the first of uh, million plus uh, cities. Uh, the drama and spectacle of some of those entertainment things. And of course some great stories as well. To boot. Uh, and because of that, I think it, it is something that will uh, either complement other art subjects you're doing or certainly give you a balance. If in year eight you are already destined to be a nuclear physicist or something and science is going to be your bag, uh, you know, you've still got something that will give you a bit of balance uh, as well. As I say, feel free to ask any questions either to myself or to uh, members of the colleagues that are in the, in the prep school. I hope that's, that's been helpful. If there are any questions you want to ask on the way out, folks, feel free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.